Hi everyone. There are a lot of big claims for apple cider vinegar in the diet and its beneficial effects on different areas of the body, including keeping worm burdens low. Here I'm going to explain my take on whether this works in ruminants, which is one of my key fields of work as a vet, as well as the rationale and evidence behind my opinion. I'll see you in a sec. Hi all, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. Before we crack right on into it, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below, thumbs up to let me know you're there and appreciating the episodes. Feel free to ask any questions or comment away. So one of the benefits of apple cider vinegar in food or water has been claimed to be a natural dewormer and gut health enhancer. The leading theory is that this has to do with the acetate or acetic acid, that's two words for the same thing, component in there which alters the pH of the gut, which would have an effect on anything living there. Now to understand whether this is likely to have an effect in ruminants, that's your cattle, goats, sheep and to an extent camelids like alpaca and llama, you have to understand a bit about the anatomy and nutrition. Ruminants have four stomach chambers, camelids have three but it works in a similar way. The first stomach chamber that hard food goes into in adults is called the rumen. And the rumen is a massive fermentation vat. It's a huge chamber that takes up about half the abdomen and this is where grass, hay meal, all the hard food sits and ferments in there. This rumen is filled with bacteria predominantly which smother the food and the bacteria break it down. So really the food is feeding the bacteria and then the byproducts of the bacteria's metabolism are what feeds the animals. So when we're talking about ruminant nutrition, we're really talking about bacteria nutrition. Now these different species of bacteria in the rumen produce one of three different volatile fatty acids. They're called VFAs. They are substances that are used for fat synthesis and energy requirements for the animal. The three VFAs that are produced in massive amounts by the bacteria for the animal to use are propionate, butyrate and acetate. Can you see where I'm going with this? Ruminants produce a huge amount of acetate, the component in apple cider vinegar that's supposed to be beneficial, on their own anyway. Not only that, but acetate is actually the one that's produced in larger quantities than the others. There are litres of rumen fluid slushing around in that rumen inside the animal at any given time. Litres, several litres of it. Not only is there already a tonne of acetate in that rumen at any given time, but the rumen wall is incredibly efficient at absorbing acetate to use it for fat synthesis and energy. And to avoid any pH fluctuations, acidic changes, further down the tract. Furthermore, we have three stomach chambers to go through before even reaching the stomach where the worms might live, let alone further down into the intestine. I hope you're still with me on this logic train. In lieu of any real scientific evidence, which there just isn't, I just cannot imagine how a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in their feed would do anything at all. And if you did give enough to make a difference to the acidity of the rumen, this would presumably need to be a pretty grand amount, you would run into a very real risk of doing serious damage to the bacterial flora. When we see high levels of another VFA propionate, we get a fatal disease called rumen acidosis, where the pH goes way out of whack. That's regarding propionate, not acetate, but I would still be very concerned about deliberately trying to alter the pH of that stomach. It's a really fine-tuned flora in there. My point is it's a well-oiled machine and any differences you did make, assuming it didn't kill the animal, would still be incredibly unlikely to make it further down the track where the worms live, which is significantly further down. Okay, now this anatomy is not the same for animals with one stomach, like cats, dogs and humans. So I can't, I'm not going to comment there as that's not my field of special interest, but in ruminants, I just can't see any way that it would do a thing just a drop in the ocean of the several litres of rumen fluid already sloshing around that already contain huge amounts of acetate. Now there are other components to apple cider vinegar that may have a possible beneficial effect. The mother, which refers to the bacteria and yeast that grow in there during the fermentation process, so that's like the stringy stuff that you see floating around. This would by definition be a probiotic, 
adding live bacteria to the stomach. But again, the chances of this making it anywhere near where the worms live just seem slim to none. So I'm so sorry to be a buzzkill and ruminants. I have to say, nah, the risks of apple cider vinegar as a teaspoon a day is just a waste of time really, feel free to do it. I, I just can't imagine it's gonna make any difference. On the other side of things, you can cause inflammation and burning of the esophagus, the food pipe in the throat, if it's given undiluted or in a tablet form. Please do not do this for any animal. There are definitely very real ways to keep worms low without using drenches in your ruminants. Check out this video here. If you're interested, I've also done one on the evidence behind diatomaceous earth. So check that out if you're anyway inclined. That's just going through the evidence that's out there so you can make up your own mind. Okay guys, thanks for checking in. I'm sorry to be a buzzkill. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.